Let's talk about the midterms. Um, in just about every election since the passage of the Affordable Care Act, Republicans have campaigned against Obamacare to great effect. It's an issue that helped them win the midterms in 2010 and 2014. Uh, maybe not so much in 2018. Here's from today's Washington Post. Democrats are pummeling Republican candidates for governor and Senate over a pending lawsuit by 20 Republican-led states that could allow insurance companies to stop covering people with pre-existing medical conditions. This issue is being highlighted more than any other right now in Democratic television commercials. Dan, how serious is this lawsuit, and how much is the Republican Party as a whole responsible for it? It's very serious, and it's incredibly serious for anyone who depends on the Affordable Care Act for their life. Right? It is exactly what that is. And it is just the latest iteration of a nonstop Republican effort to prevent, to take health care away from people. We've seen it since the day Barack Obama signed the Affordable Care Act into law. And it, the, what is so interesting now is I was around in that campaign in 2010 mm. when Republicans hammered us on the Affordable Care Act, called it government run health care, death panels, all this other bullshit. And Democrats did not fight back. We tried to pivot to something else. Let's talk about tax cuts or whatever, whatever the, was something different than the, the elephant in the room. And it, it's sort of a corollary to the idea, to uh, Kobe Bryant saying, which is you lose 100% of the arguments that you don't make. Yeah. And for the first time, with the brief exception of the 2012 election, where Barack Obama took on the idea of repeal head on in that campaign and turned it to our advantage and made the Affordable Care Act its most popular time during his presidency, for the first time, Democrats are on the offense on this issue and they are making the case. And it is the single most important issue for most voters out there, and it is what I think is going to, if and when the Democrats take the House, is going to be because we made an argument that we are the ones fighting for health care for every American, and they're the ones fighting to take it away from them. Um, yeah. yeah, there you go. So, Aaron, in 2010, that campaign that Dan was talking about, uh, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin released a campaign ad where he literally shot a copy of Obama's climate change bill. Um, <laughs> last week, he released an ad where he shot a copy of this anti-Obamacare lawsuit. And it's not just Manchin, right? Like every, as Dan was saying, every red state Democrat in the Senate who's up in 2018, um, even though they might not be with the National Party on a whole bunch of issues, they are there on health care and the Affordable Care Act. They're all running ads about protecting pre-existing conditions. Why do you think the politics around health care have shifted so dramatically over just a few years? Well, I can't put my finger on the why, but I think it might just be kind of a mass realization. Um, so just kind of to rewind, when I was in high school back in rural Wisconsin, uh, I worked at a nursing home. And one of the things I saw working at the nursing home was that I saw how much it cost every year. I saw how nursing homes would look at people's assets to decide whether or not they could afford to be in a nursing home. And I saw families that were completely decimated by end of life care. Um, I think that what's happening right now is baby boomers are aging to the point where this is a thing that they need to think about and talk about, both among themselves and with their families. And it, it's, it's a real threat that the biggest, the biggest threat to baby boomers having any wealth or quality of life going into their later years, or for millennials or generation Xers having any quality of life, not having to spend all their money taking care of their parents, is some form of healthcare that's affordable, both for people who are elderly and people who are younger. I, I think that this is a really good thing for the Democrats to be hammering on, like especially in my home state, Wisconsin. Scott Walker is joining this 20 state lawsuit and it is, isn't going over very well. Walker, yeah. who's survived a uh, recall election and been massively unpopular, this might be the thing that takes him down, which is really exciting. Yeah, Tommy, what do you think? Well, it's like, there, there's this old adage, right, that it's, it's really hard to take away a benefit once you give it to someone, and yeah. this is proving that to be true. It, what, like, in 2016, we lost a lot of states, you guys might remember. Uh, <laughs> But like these ads are up in Michigan, Ohio, North Dakota, Indiana. 50% of all federal Democratic ads are about health care. I think that's really interesting. 75% of Americans think it's really important to cover, to guarantee coverage of pre-existing pre conditions, including nearly 60% of Republicans. So they, gave, they handed us an issue by trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act over and over and over again. Approval for the Affordable Care Act went up 
because these morons kept running at it, and they did a Rose Garden event when it passed the house where they slapped each other on the back and yucked it up about how they're going to rip healthcare away from people who have cancer. A little too soon. A little too soon. So it's like it's a real issue for people. And the other thing they did is when they failed to do it federally, they pushed it into the states. So now all these secretary of state or governor candidates in states are getting hammered for being on part of this lawsuit, mm -hmm. for signing this letter. So it's become like one of the most potent issues there are for Democrats. So, you know, Trump might have a great economy, but a good economy doesn't make up for pushing shitty economic policies. Right. And they're going to learn that the hard way. It's also really interesting that a lot of the voters who tip the election to Trump in rural and exurban counties in Aaron's home state of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Ohio, the people who voted for Barack Obama in 2012, Trump in 2016, have a very high approval rating of the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is an issue that helps us both with the the non-voters in our base we need to turn out, and also with the voters we need to persuade in the red or districts. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to add something to that, though, I, I think that this is an issue that really resonates specifically with women who are voters, too, women who might lean, lean a little red. Uh, women were routinely charged more than men before Obamacare for the same health care coverage. Um, having a baby is an expensive nightmare. There's all kinds of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Plus there's health care issues. <laughs> <laughs> but enough of that. Anyway, uh, no, I, but, I, but I do think that, I do think that women's, uh, women's health care expenses are something that uh, are huge and, and front of mind for female voters. And you know, white women extremely fucked up in 2016. <laughs> But I think that white, there are, there's enough of them that are convincible, and I think that this is an issue that specifically can appeal to women. Yeah. Man, if you told us after the 2010 elections when we lost that, you know, don't worry, uh, eight years from now, the Affordable Care Act will be so popular that the reddest state Democrats will be running on it, but also Donald Trump will be president. Yeah, and then one finger yeah, of the monkey paw uh, goes to right. <laughs> really, uh, Slow and steady wins the race on Obamacare. <laughs> Unbelievable. You remember it? We, don't worry. Now that it's the law, people are going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. We're going to take a few, few twists and turns first. Yeah, yeah, geez. Scott Brown, Donald Trump, then you like it? <laughs> um, well, love it. So some, Republic some Republicans are still running health care ads. Um, they're running ads against Democrats who've proposed Medicare for all. Some of them are running ads against Democrats who didn't propose Medicare for all, but they don't really care. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, the argument they're using is um, this Democrat wants to pass Medicare for all, and what that's going to do is that's going to steal Medicare away from senior citizens in America. And so traditional Medicare is going to be weaker because everyone has Medicare. Um, do you think this is effective? I don't know if it's effective. I think we should be, uh, I don't think we should uh, dismiss it. Mm. I think we should go into fighting for Medicare for all with open eyes about the fact that we are heading into debating something that hasn't really been fully debated yet. That's good, that's part of the process, is arguing for it and why we believe it's the right policy. You know, Donald Trump's sinister gift is understanding that people don't always tell the truth about what, <laughs> <laughs> no, about what they think. Trench and observation. Thanks, buddy. Uh, <laughs> but no, 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 no. But I, but I, 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 mean that, I mean that in a slightly smarter way than it sounds. <laughs> I hope. What I said, but not Do dumb. tell. Yeah. Here's the, but that, 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 that because he is so monstrous, because he has no values, he understands that sometimes people claim to want, claim to believe something, claim to support something, but they, they hold a dark reservation. He is the, he is, he is the human form of like the dark reservation. Uh, and, and one thing that I, you know, he's gone, he said this dumb thing that like, they're trying to take your Medicare for socialism. And it sounds stupid, right? But, but, but one of the things I do think we should be, be uh, uh, aware of and ready to, to, to argue on is, I do think that there are a lot of near retirees who look at Medicare for all as something that would save them, right? There are so many people who are in their, you know, uh, 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 years away from being eligible for Medicare, and they're playing Russian roulette, right? Have insurance, don't have insurance. Your friends, the baby boomers. The baby boomers, absolutely. Well, <laughs> you know, my parents were in this boat, right? They, they, were, they weren't eligible for Medicare yet. They were struggling to afford insurance, which was getting expensive. They, you know, uh, uh, and when you, if you face any kind of medical emergency before you hit that threshold, it can deplete your savings right before you get universal health care from the government. 
Um, I do think that seniors hold tight to their Medicare and would be worried that uh, Medicare being available to everyone might somehow diminish their care. I don't they think certainly that do that with Social Security. They're what? Like, they certainly do that with Social Security. Yeah. They want to protect their benefits. They don't give a fuck if the money runs out for us. Right. So, so, oh. so, so I would say I just think it's something to be aware of, and we have to make sure that it's on a policy front. We have to make sure that uh, uh, when we are proposing Medicare for all, we are doing it in a way that it assures people who already are on Medicare that their benefits won't be less and that there, that, that there will be enough doctors and availability and all the rest. And then on a political front, we just need to know this is, a, this is an argument that will come at us pretty hard. Yeah, and, and let's be clear about it too. When they say, um, you know, you're gonna, other people are gonna get Medicare, that, that's your Medicare, they're not talking about your uh, friendly middle-class neighbor, right? This is back to what Aaron was saying about otherizing people. Illegal. Like these ads are saying, yeah, Medicare for all means healthcare, taken away from senior citizens and it goes to illegal, it goes to undocumented immigrants and it goes to poor people who aren't working and that's the argument that they're trying to make. Abs absolutely and, and, just, and it is another example of why this, you know, this number that we've been talking about that only one in five young people turned out to vote in the last election is so important. Seniors vote. They get in their cars, they beep, then they back out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta honk that horn before you back out once you hit 70. I'm glad they do it. This part we'll leave in. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. I think that that Medicare, socialism is stealing your Medicare nonsense argument. It's something that appeals to just someone who is a, a giant fucking asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so... That's a yeah. bit too fine a point we, on it. Those and, are the voters we've lost. Just, giant fucking uh, asshole. If the old people figure out podcasts, they're going to get real mad. They're going to get so <laughs> mad. Okay, you know what? They can go ahead and try to catch me. I'll be running. <laughs> <laughs> um, second thing, though, I think, it, like, one thing, it, kind of going to, to vote when you have a busy life or you're young, you have a job and it's hard for you to take time off, can be a little bit of a challenge when you're young, but you have to do it. And one way that always has motivated me is I like to picture an elderly fucking asshole <laughs> who votes in my district the opposite of me, and I like to imagine myself just canceling their vote. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That gets Pic you going. Picture the person like whose vote you want to cancel and then go vote. Um, that is a really good idea for some sort of a campaign of some kind. <laughs> cancel out an asshole's vote. You can do it. Picture them in your mind, huh? That guy that locked you in the blue recycling bin in high school. You remember his name, but you won't say it now because it's a real story. <laughs> Dan, um... <laughs> Back on topic, people. <laughs> In addition to health care, <laughs> what is the closing economic argument for Democrats in these next 60 days, or I, however many days? Depends <laughs> on when you listen. Oh, yes. <laughs> it could be forever. The, I think the important thing to understand is that ultimately any campaign message, whether it's about the economy or health care or anything else, is a question about, it's a proxy for a question about your values and your character, and it boils down to who are you going to fight for if and when you get into office? And I think it is so important that this is a contrast message that we are going to fight, protect health care, to raise wages for working class Americans while Republicans are giving massive tax cuts to millionaires, billionaires, and Wall Street banks in order to pay for, paid for by jacking up premiums mm. on the, the same working and middle class Americans and eventually with, through cuts for Medicare and Social Security. It just has to be, it's like who are we are fighting for average, everyday Americans who are working hard out there, and the Republicans are fighting for people like Donald Trump. 